Now, join Archbishop Dr. Dominika Bierman in Global Awakening. Great is the Lord, Yahweh is His name, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, His holy mountain. Beautiful in elevation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion in the far north, the city of the great King. God Elohim in her palaces has made himself known as a stronghold. For lo, the kings assemble themselves. They pass by together. They saw it, then they were amazed. They were terrified. They fled in alarm. Panic seized them there, anguish as a woman in childbirth. With the east wind you break the ships of Tarshish. As we have heard, so have we seen, in the city of Yavet Sebaot, the Lord of the armies, in the city of our God, Elohim God, will establish her forever. Now that is about Yerushalayim, the city of the great king, and the only great king on the face of the earth is Yavet Sebaot, the Lord of the armies, and is personified in the person of his son, Yeshua, the Messiah, who is the great king of all the earth. He is called the King of Kings and is called the Lord of Lords. And one day he will sit and rule from the holy temple that will be established on the most important piece of real estate in the world, which is Mount Zion, also called Mount Moriah, also called the Temple Mount, and in many cases, the Holy Mountain or the Holy Hill of Yahweh. Whenever you hear the words Holy Mountain, Holy Hill, Mount Zion, when you hear those words, you know you're talking about the Temple Mount, the place where the ancient temple of King Solomon used to be. The first time that the temple is built is when Solomon builds it, and he builds it on the site of Mount Moriah. Now from there, Jerusalem becomes the most important city in the world because the Shekhinah, the very indwelling presence of the creator of the universe was dwelling inside of the temple of Solomon in a place called the Holy of Holies. And that temple had three precincts. It had an outer court, it had an inner court and then it had the holy place and the holy place itself also had more precincts and it had also the court of the priest it had the holy place and the holy of holies in the holy of holies there used to be an ark called the ark of the covenant inside of the ark of the covenant there used to be the remembrance of what Elohim did in the desert for the children of Israel namely the giving of the Torah the Torah is the commandments of God. The Torah is the instructions of God. When Yahweh gives the Torah on Mount Sinai to the Jewish people, to the people of Israel, eventually those tablets of the Torah written by the finger of God, by the finger of Elohim. Say with me, by the finger. By the finger. Very important because the New Testament tells us if I cast demons out by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. And so the same finger of God, the same finger of Elohim by which demons are cast out is the same finger that wrote the commandments on Mount Sinai. We are dealing with exactly the same Holy Spirit. Amen? Ruach HaKodesh, or many call him the Shekhinah. Can you say with me the Shekhinah? Shekhinah. Yeah, it's not Shekhinah, but Shekhinah. Shekhinah means the dwelling, the presence that dwells, okay? Shekhinah, the presence that dwells. And the presence that dwelt, dwelt inside of this temple, inside of a little box called the Ark of the Covenant. Inside of that Ark were the Ten Commandments. Inside of that Ark was a jar of manna, reminding us that in the desert Yahweh gave us and He provided for us manna daily in the desert to remind us that He's our shepherd, He's our provider, and that we should never put our eyes on anything else or anyone else for provision. And then the third thing that was there was the rod of Aaron that had budded, and that rod represented the authority of Aaron as the high priest and established the authority of the Levitical tribe and of Aaron, the line of Aaron, as the high priest over Israel. And this is so amazing because the Bible says that the Levitical priest will remain before him forever. 
In other words, that line, that lineage will continue forever. And that's why today, as part of the preparation of the Temple Mount to house the third temple, there is also a school of the Levites where they are detecting and, and gathering all of the Levites in Israel. And they are calling all the Levites and all of them that come from also from the lineage of Aaron, HaKohen. What is Kohen? Kohen is priest. But Kohanim are the ones that come from the line of Aaron, the Levite. The other Levites are called Levites. Only the ones that come from the lineage of Aaron are called Kohen or Kohanim. That's why one of the major Hebrew names is Kohen. And another one of the major Hebrew surnames is Levi. Why? Because there are so many of the tribe of Levi and especially from the family of Aaron, the high priest, that are still alive today. In fact, my husband, Rabbi Baruch, comes from the lineage of Aaron HaKohen, of Aaron the high priest. He comes from the lineage. Yahweh has preserved that line. Hallelujah. Because in the end times, they have a role to play. And the role to play is to reestablish again the temple worship prior to the return of Messiah and begin to entreat the Messiah to come and though they will not know who the Messiah is for the most part eventually Zechariah 12 tells us that at the time where all the nations come against Jerusalem and I'm going to read from there at the time that all the nations come against Jerusalem then Yahweh will fight for Jerusalem as in the day of battle and when we go to Zechariah chapter 12 we are going to see that it says that at the same time that this battle against Jerusalem happens, which is already happening, and I'm going to explain immediately, because there is an interfaith battle concerning Jerusalem. I'm going to repeat it again. There is an interfaith New World Order, UN UNESCO order, battle against Jerusalem. And it says there, the burden of the word of Adonai concerning Israel. Thus declares Yahweh who stretches out the heavens, lays the foundation of the earth, and forms the spirit of man within him. In other words, we're talking about the creator of the universe. He establishes who he is first. And then he says, Behold, I'm going to make Jerusalem, Jerusalem, a cup that causes reeling to all peoples around. And when they siege is against Jerusalem, it will also be against Judah or against the Jewish people. In other words, when understand what the politics are happening right now when the battle is against Jerusalem to divide Jerusalem to make it a United Nations place to make it a Muslim place to make it a Catholic place or any other place besides the city that is the capital of Israel preparing for the return of Messiah the moment that you hear anybody coming against Jerusalem in any way shape and form to divide it to give a, a supposed Palestinians a capital in East Jerusalem, you are dealing with the same thing that is written here. They are coming against Jerusalem, they will also come against Judah. What does it mean they will come against Judah? That means that there will be a persecution against the Jewish people. So when they come against Jerusalem, they come also against Judah. They come also against the Jewish people. And that's why at the same time the, the false peace agreement has been happening, has been trying to be pushed, and especially lately the United States of America has been very involved in pushing that false peace agreement for the division of the land, the division of Jerusalem, the establishing of an ungodly and biblical Palestinian state that is not mentioned in the Bible anywhere. And it's not sanctioned in the Bible anywhere. We are dealing with the persecution against the Jewish people and therefore all the bouts of anti-Semitism or anti-Judaism or anti-Jewish or hatred against the Jews have multiplied and multiplied and multiplied and multiplied since the Oslo Accords came into being or since the Madrid Accords already in 1990 until today. Though the Oslo Accords are dead, still the same hideous plan of Haj Amin al Husseini to destroy, to annihilate Israel from within that he got from Hitler, it continues until this day. And so the moment they come against Jerusalem, don't be fooled when they said, no, this is not anti Semitism. This is, and, and I'm going to change that word also, but because it's not about anti Semitism, but I'm going to change it in a moment. But this is, they say, oh, no, no, we're not anti Semites, we're just anti Zionist. When people say they are anti-Zionists, which means they are anti the restoration of the Jewish people to Zion, when they say that they are anti-Zionists, which means they are against the return of the Jewish people back to the land, they are against the wholeness of the land given to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, they are against the covenant that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, 
they are actually anti-Jewish, but they say, no, 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 we're not anti-Jewish, we're just anti-Zionist. Don't be fooled by those political terms. It's one and the same. If you're an anti-Zionist, you're an anti-God, and you're an anti-Jewish. Can you say it with me together? If you're anti-Zionist, you're anti-God, you're anti-Jewish. It's exactly the same. And so we say here, that it says that when the nations come against Jerusalem, they will also come against Judah. In other words, they were persecuting the Jewish people, and that's happening all over the nations right now in a terrible way, mostly through Islam. Throughout many, many, many generations was through Christianity. Many Jews were killed in the name of Jesus Christ. But now it's through Islam for the most part. But unfortunately, there is a lot of Christian organizations and NGOs that are Christian in, in essence that are supporting the very false hideous Palestinian cause. You all need to understand that the, there is not such a thing as the Palestinian nation. It doesn't exist because Palestine, as they called it until the British mandate, Palestine was a political terminology of Rome and when they took over all this area and, they, and when the Turks ruled here, the Turkish Empire was here, Everybody in the land was like a Palestinian, Jews or Gentiles, uh, Jews or Muslims. When the British were here, the British, the Jews, the Arabs, everybody had an ID and it said Palestine in the ID. So there's not such a thing as a Palestinian people. The Palestinian people or anybody that lived in Palestine, that was actually Israel, but that was remained by the Romans Palestine and that lived here. All of them were called <laughs> Palestinians and there's not such a thing as a nation like that. But it was concocted by Hitler and the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, Haj Amin al-Husseini, when he visited Hitler and said, build me up an army to do the final solution in the land like a Trojan horse. The purpose was to destroy the Jewish people from within and they have succeeded thus far to the point where now people are duped under deception, uh, believing that they're fighting for the cause of these poor Palestinians when actually what they're fighting is for the annihilation of the Jewish people. And every little piece of money that they put into this they don't understand it, but it's for the annihilation of the Jewish people. It's not any less serious than if they would have donated into the Nazi party. And what happens is that many of those Christians organizations are donating money into the Palestinian cause for the purpose of the annihilation of Israel. They have never hidden their agenda. And this is what is even more, uh, you know, uh, upsetting because they have not hidden their agenda. They declare their agenda openly on TV, openly on radio, openly on the newspapers. They refuse to recognize the rights of Israel to exist in its own land. They refuse to recognize Israel as a Jewish state. They refuse to recognize it. Why? Because they have one agenda and their agenda is written in all of their textbooks. You just go to what quote unquote is called the Palestinian authorities today and you're going to see the textbooks of the children. And the textbooks of the children have got maps and in the map, the map doesn't say Israel, it says Palestine. And it doesn't say Jerusalem, it says Al-Quds. And it doesn't carry any Hebrew name, not Nazareth, not Bethlehem, not nothing. All of the names are in Arabic, Arabic, Arabic. And they teach the children that their job is to kill as many Jews as possible and to take back the land of Palestine for the Palestinians. That's totally hideous and it's a big deception. And in fact, that big deception is also mentioned in Psalms 83. And you're going to see it so clearly because I told you that the ones that are anti-Zionists are anti-God. They are anti-Jewish. It's exactly the same political terminology. And it falls within the curse of Genesis 12, 3, where it says, I will bless those who bless the descendants of not only Abraham, but Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all of the descendants through which the promise goes, I will bless the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I will curse those that curse them. And curse means I will utter a word of complete destruction and annihilation to those that come against them or take them lightly or repudiate them in any way. And in Psalm 83 it says, O Elohim, do not remain silent. Do not be silent, and O Elohim, do not be still. For behold, your enemies make an uproar, and those who hate you have exalted themselves. They make shrewd plans against your people, and conspire together against your treasured ones. They have said, Come and let us wipe them out as a nation, that the name of Israel be remembered no 
more. What's the purpose? That the name of Israel be remembered no more. I believe that all the Bibles that have got maps that say Palestine instead of Israel, since we already have been in this land for so many, like 67 years ago, going on 68 right now, then I think it's about time for the Bibles to change and the maps in the Bibles to change and carry the name of Israel because that is the covenant name of Israel. How many would agree to that? Amen. Let's, be, let's, let's begin to pray concerning that issue because that's a matter of life and death to Christians worldwide that are still siding with the enemies of Israel rather than siding with Israel and they're putting themselves on the side of the curse and not on the side of the blessing as promised to Abraham. We're going to talk more about this afterwards. Then Psalm 83 describes who are the people and it says the tents of Edom, all those that make the conspiracy against Israel, Edom and Ishmaelites and Moab and Hagrites and Geval, Ammon, Amalek, Philistia, Palestinians, were the inhabitants of Tyre, Lebanon. So we are dealing with all of the Arab nations that are around us and with the people that are also within us. After Bishop wrote Grafted In, there was a little controversy because there's a couple pages on the name, real name of our Messiah. It's not Jesus Christ, it's Yeshua HaMashiach. And so the Lord says to her, I want you to teach my name. And she says, well, Lord, it could cause controversy. And the Lord didn't say anything. And afterwards, she was supposed to be preaching. She had her subject matter, and all that came out of her mouth is a real name of the Lord, that it's Yeshua. And to prove it, she says, let anybody who needs to be healed come up here, and I'm not going to pray for healing. I'm just going to declare the Lord's name over. Well, a woman who was born deaf and dumb came up. She had a baby in her arms, gave it to somebody, and she said, Yeshua. And her, her eyes just lit up, and they got huge, and she said, Yeshua. The first time in her life that she ever heard or spoke was when she said the name, the real name of the Messiah, Yeshua. You need to use it too. Now when we go back to um, Psalm 48, where we've been quoting at the beginning from, we can see that there is a very special happening on Psalm 48. It says here, that great is Adonai, can you say with me great? great, is Adonai, and greatly to be praised. So what are we to do? We are to praise Him, right? Greatly to be praised, amen? We are to praise Him. In Where is He great and where are we supposed to praise Him? In the city of our God is Holy Mountain. This is a place to praise Him. So even though I'm telling you all the things that are happening to usurp Israel, to usurp Jerusalem, and to have the anti-Messiah ruling and reigning from the Temple Mount, I can tell you, beloved ones, that the best weapon of warfare against this is prayer and praise. Amen? Greatly to be praised. So when we're here, it's so important that we are going to what? Praise Him. And then it talks about the kings of the earth that were terrified here. Why would the kings of the earth be terrified here? We're going to talk about it in another uh, program, but it's because of the judgment that, is being f that will fall on the nations for attacking Jerusalem, for attacking Israel, for coming against the Jewish people. And so the panic, the terror strikes them right here in the city of Jerusalem. So if we want to be praying, we want to be praying, let the fear of Yah fall on the city of Jerusalem. Let the fear of God fall on all the enemies of Israel, enemies of Yah, enemies of God right here in the city of Jerusalem. And then right after that, it says, as we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, Yahweh Sebaot, the Lord of the armies, in the city of our God, God will establish her forever. So for how long will he establish Jerusalem? Very well. When we go to the prophet Joel, it says like at the end of the chapter, the last chapter, it says, V'yudah le'olam teshev v'yerushalayim ledor vador, which means, and Yehuda or Judah forever will be established and Jerusalem from generation to generation. In other words, even though empires have come and gone, and I've tried to take over the Temple Mount, and I've taken it over for the purpose of ruling the nations, and yet 
Yahweh established it as his holy city, the place where his name dwells. In fact, when we went to Second Chronicles 6, and King Solomon begins to pray and he prays and he dedicates the temple. At the beginning when he dedicates the temple, he says these words. He says, let your name dwell here forever. And so we also see that the Temple Mount, where the temple used to be and the temple that shall be rebuilt, is the place where the name of Yahweh has been established forever. And even though there's been shouts of cry to Allah Wakbar, which means Allah is the greatest, truly and truly Yahweh, especially as we're coming to the special Jubilee of Jerusalem, is saying enough is enough. I want my name to be exalted in the holy city. I want my name to be exalted on the Temple Mount and I want my name Yahweh, Yahweh Tsevaot, the Lord of hosts, to be established on the holy mountain. So the battle that we have in Jerusalem, the battle that we have on the Temple Mount is the battle of Yahweh Tsevaot himself, the battle of the Lord of hosts himself because of what because he's vindicating his holy name that's why he is going to win it and that's why it is won but he's recruiting every one of us to pray and to do whatever we need to do in the spirit and in the natural to uphold the covenant that Yahweh has both with the holy city of Jerusalem and also with the people of Israel. Amen. After Bishop wrote Grafted In, there was a little controversy because there's a couple pages on the name, real name of our Messiah. It's not Jesus Christ, it's Yeshua HaMashiach. And so the Lord says to her, I want you to teach my name. And she says, well, Lord, it could cause controversy. And the Lord didn't say anything. And afterwards, she was supposed to be preaching. She had her subject matter, and all that came out of her mouth is a real name of the Lord, that it's Yeshua. And to prove it, she says, let anybody who needs to be healed come up here, and I'm not going to pray for healing. I'm just going to declare the Lord's name over. Well, a woman who was born deaf and dumb came up. She had a baby in her arms, gave it to somebody, and she said, Yeshua! And her, her eyes just lit up, and they got huge, and she said, Yeshua. The first time in her life that she ever heard or spoke was when she said the name, the real name of the Messiah, Yeshua. You need to use it too. And I'm going to continue this on, on Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 2. We're going to go there and we're going to see again how Yahweh says that Judah is established forever. Hallelujah. Powerful book, Zechariah. I should read it. And it starts with a sentence that says, Elohim's or God's favor for Zion. And then it says this, verse 10. Sing for joy and be glad, O daughter of Zion. For behold, I'm coming and I will dwell in your midst, declares Yahweh. Many nations will join themselves to Adonai in that day and will become my people. Then I will dwell in your midst and you will know that Yahweh will possess, that Yahweh Tsevaot, the Lord of hosts, has sent me to you. Yahweh the Lord will possess Yehuda, Judah, as his portion in the Holy Land and will again choose Jerusalem. Be silent, all flesh, before Adonai, for he is aroused from his holy habitation. So we see here that in the end of times, Jerusalem is established again. Yahweh again chooses Judah. Now, that, that is a very important factor here because what's been happening in Jerusalem has been an interfaith battle. Not long ago, there was a festival here called Mekudeshet. And it has been happening, not, this is not the first time, but this year was by far the greatest. And this particular festival, Mekudesh, hosted the representatives of every religious system, including Buddhism, Hinduism, including uh, 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 Christianity of different factors, Catholicism, including Islam, uh, including New Age. Mm? All of those, they were gathered together to worship the God of their liking in the way that they want to worship 
in the city of Jerusalem, on the Temple Mount, all around it. And they did all kinds of sessions to explain their religion to the people so that we can come into unity and the place of unity will be in Jerusalem. Now that is the takeover by the anti-Messiah, by the Antichrist and the New World Order. But people are oblivious. They are looking at this happening like very exciting. Let's go to Jerusalem at that time. There will be all kinds of worships, uh, workshops about this religion, the other religion, the other religious system. And it's going to be very interesting and music and this and that and dancing and whatnot. But basically the purpose is to unite under the banner of peace, that it is a false peace treaty where about all religious systems unite together and the center of their unity, the city, the holy city of Jerusalem, the holy city of Jerusalem. This festival is called Mekudeshet, which means sanctified. And the purpose, Mekudeshet from the word Kadosh, sanctified, the purpose is to declare that Jerusalem or Jerusalem better I say Jerusalem in this case, Jerusalem is sanctified for all of the religions of the world. That is exactly what's been happening here. And the people are blind and deceived and they don't see that God, the God of Israel is a holy God. And he is not putting up with any other worship but the worship to him as the King of Kings and as the Lord of Lords. And therefore, this is becoming such a serious issue that he will have to act somehow. He will have to arise somehow and he will have to say his peace. And therefore, he says, anyone in Zechariah 12 that tries to lift up Jerusalem or tries to take on Jerusalem will be crushed under Jerusalem as a stone. Because Jerusalem is not Jerusalem, beloved one, Jerusalem is Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim means the inheritance of double portion of shalom and blessing, the place of a portal of heaven opened by sacrifice, the sacrifices of these pure animals that went on the altar before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the sacrifice of King David, the sacrifice of Abraham when the covenant of substitution happened on Mount Moriah. It is the place of a portal of heaven of interaction between Elohim and man, interaction between the Yahweh and the people of Israel and from the people of Israel with all the nations of the earth. And that's the reason why when Yeshua returns, he will return here to the Mount of Olives and he will walk all the way into his temple and sit on the Temple Mount as the King of Kings and Psalms 2 says, ruling and reigning the nations with a rod of iron all the way from Jerusalem and no other religions shall be acceptable. Only the worship of Yahweh Tzavod and Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah. Stay put because we're going to talk a lot more about this.